Why did you quit guitar? <laughs> I was horrible. And I didn't put any effort to it. To play on skate dance, you can't be that horrible. Because these are not easy stuff. Hi everyone, this is Yassi from Alpha Metal and I'm very honored to be here in the presence of Johan and Mikael from Dark Tranquility who have just played the show here on Wacken. So, how did you enjoy the show guys? It was awesome, it's great to be back here. Uh, of course it was pretty chaotic because of the weather and you know, everything that has it's been going on. But it, you know, the weather's awesome now, it's drying up but it feels fantastic so I, I couldn't be happier ever. We were worried for a couple of days, uh, but it worked out and it was great. It was cool to play uh, some songs that we haven't played here before um, uh, and the crowd seemed to be incredibly into it. So yeah, we absolutely loved it. It was awesome. Hell yeah, man. This is beautiful. Whew. Let's do another old one. This we haven't played for a bit. This is something called uh, Hours Past in Excess. What is something a destiny to failure? What is something a man meant to be? What is someone ever sees? How about you? How do you enjoy the weather? The, the weather? The weather. How do you enjoy it? The weather today is, is very good actually. So that was a surprise. Yeah. Because we we've been toning down the expectations. <laughs> yeah, so, but the forecast was thunderstorms. But we, yeah, we brought the good weather. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And playing like in, you know, before four o'clock at a start, you could tell like, okay, maybe this is where everybody's finally inside, you know, the festival area. And it, was, so it was very, very cool. It was really packed when you played. As a Wacken veteran, how do you label the infield? How do you think it's looking like here to, today compared to other years? No, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> we were here the first time in 2000, yeah. or 99 actually, and then 2001, and then we had a few years that we come and then we played in 15 I think and then 18 and 18. And so it's been very, very different, right? I mean, like, the first two years was, it wasn't that, it was starting, but it was a very different festival. And I kind of like that. I mean, there are so many festivals that we played um, over the years where you see, like, a progression. You see how it kind of, it's growing, it's getting better, it's more, you know, organized, and it's more kind of like, you know, focused for, you know, both for bands and also for the audience. And I think what I've seen over the years for Bakken is that it just becomes a better experience for everybody, you know. Of course, whether withstanding, but still, like, it, it's something that everybody wants to come to. And all the bands want to come here, too, because it's a great experience for bands as well. So, I, I think it's super, super cool. And I, so, the first right time now, with, for DT was 99? Yeah. How big was the festival then? It was pretty damn big, I mean, for, <laughs> for, at least for us. And it, and it was 20, 10? Uh, I, mean, I, I, yeah, it's hard know, I don't to know any figures, but yeah. it, you know, it, at, at the time it was uh, probably the biggest stage we played. Yeah, so it was, it was really cool. And, and I was here last year as well. I saw some amazing shows, and I just to see like how how the festival is growing has it's been fascinating. To me. Which is also kind of a really nice turnaround to the next question. Also, you as a band, you are progressing as human beings. You are building up character. You are building up a lot of experience throughout the years and so also you can hear that in the records you get more eloquent in writing you get more eloquent in the terms of presenting your music with much more detail so to speak what do you think was kind of a turning point where you all thought well we can get this to another level we can just think about this and about that we can tweak our own identity more to something where we can just represent all the thoughts we're having as musicians on the stage and in the song itself I wouldn't say it was like a conscious decision, decision? to do yeah. so. But it was it was something that, that kind of like came 
Okay, gradually, right? So yeah. maybe in 96, 97 or something like that, we kind of figured out like, okay, this is where we are and it's maybe not where we want to be. And then we kind of changed things and changed gears in 99 with an album called Projector. And then we kind of just, you know, tried something kind of new and different because we felt like the scene at least, or the the style of music we were playing was like, kind of, everybody's doing it, there's no fun, like we have to get away from it. And maybe it was only like in 2005 or something that we did damage done where I felt like, okay, we're back to it and we've had this experience of, of going very different but now we can go back to what we really love, but with the added experience of, of done those, having done those albums. And that really helped. And I think, so from, yeah, from 2005 onwards, I think we've kind of like honed in on, on what we do best, I think. And um, it kind of developed our sound from that. And, um, and it was cool to, to, to kind of start kind of like touring different areas, like showing our music to, in, in, in different territories and kind of get me get inspired by that going like great this is what we kind of need to do and I mean we've never been a band that it's about kind of you know pleasing anyone else outside the band it's just like what we like is awesome and if, if the five or six of us can agree that this is good then hopefully people will like it too you know that, that's always been our kind of like motivation and, and uh, mantra but um, I think it became evident like, like what really works and where it does not. So for a moment, for example, which was your latest record, yeah. now you're all working on a new one. Yeah. Uh, we had also a major turning point uh, band-wise because yeah. Niklas was exiting, Johan, you were joining, yeah. and so how was it for you to get into a working machine as a new guitar player, maybe even now also just inspiring the band from your point of view with your ideas on the guitar? I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun because I've been a fan of this band since the first album. I remember uh, listening to to Dark and Cruelty since, since Skydancer came out. Oh my god, yeah. all of and, me. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a big deal back then, like this you know, more death metal, but more more melodic and everything, like getting everything deeper and, and more like, yeah, musical. So there was a, there was a um, very formative years for me uh, listening to Dark Equality and all those other bands that we that we know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The bands I'm talking about. So it was it was kind of a. I mean, I've always been a fan of the band and, and listening to, of course, The Gallery and, and Damage Done. And I think it's a fantastic album and fiction. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's super inspiring for me to get invited to write with this band. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. And it, uh, familiar, the, the way I worked with uh, my previous band, Andromeda, which is kind of the same way of working, but even more collective and more like going over things and just really analyzing everything. And, and like, someone might have a good idea, but you have to go through the whole process of development through a, a band uh, perspective. So there's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah. It's like a constructor side in the end. Yeah. That you just yeah. have the fundament, and then you yeah. just need to and get everything we, together. We have a demo, and then we rewrite it like I don't know how many times. Like in the end, sometimes I don't really remember what they started with. Like, oh, it was this, but it turned out to something very different. Uh, this is it's really cool. But many beautiful solos on moment. Thank you, thank you. Of course, I'm really into. <laughs> lead guitar solo guitar but for me uh, it's always been rhythm guitar writing songs is for me more important i play guitar every day just to keep my chops up because i, I for me it's more fun to play if i'm in shape so to speak but most of the guitar playing uh, is about rhythm like solo is just icing on the cake to have a tasty cake with icing exactly because if because yeah i mean yeah if you can just play solos and play fast and, and but you can't really play rhythm and to me it's just like yeah you can you can run but you can walk it's like you don't have the basics you just don't connect to anything yeah. basically yeah. Since you 
also have um, already announced working on a new album. Is your next record, if you are able to tell, going into a direction where you also have kind of a over subscribing theme? Yeah, well, I do. Um, I haven't really gotten there yet. Like we're okay. working on the music right now, um, and I have a, some ideas, and I, and so far the, the songs that I've, the, the the lyrics I've written, I've, it's 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 on the theme. It's it's some deals with all the frustration. But I, I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna like you know, kind of tie it all together, or if it's gonna be very separate. I don't, if, uh, that theme, you know, normally that's something that kind of either I decide on my theme before the album, and then like that. The rest can come and comes naturally, but so far I haven't really decided on one. But but we still have some time, and it's it's gonna work out. But it's it's fun to kind of um, to be in the this process where we are right now, where we have all the songs, but they need to be kind of finalized and and shaped into exactly what we want them to be. Um, I figure out like the emotional kind of impact it needs to have and how it needs to feel for us and how we want it to feel when you're listening to it. Uh, so that's where we are right now. And, and, and part of that for me is to kind of like find that right kind of uh, way in, so to speak, lyrically. Um, to find like a way to kind of enhance what, what the, the, the song makes me feel. And this is what I also feel when I'm listening to the songs. Your lyrics are always so written on point with the rhythm, like we had it. And you are also, I think, just investing a lot of time how to emphasize the certain words that are important to you. So how do you, or how much time do you actually invest to get this all so sore in the middle? It depends. I mean, it used to take forever just to, <laughs> to get it right and to, to kind of rework everything until you're you're satisfied. It gets easier now, like with, with experience, I suppose. But, but at the same time, like you've done, I, I don't know, there are so many songs that we've written and so finding a new way to express things and finding a new way to kind of like accentuate a, a, um, a riff or a chorus or a verse or whatever, it becomes harder, you know, so, and, and finding new ways of expressing what I kind of feel, it's like, in a, you know, finding new words to do it, it doesn't get any easier either, but at the same time, like, the challenge is part of the, the, the appeal. Also, always reinventing yourself to something you're also not tired to listen to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yes. finding that kind of new energy um, is always important. I think we really have that now, and I'm really, really happy where we are going. And you know, I'm looking forward to kind of finishing this album, getting out there. It's going to be awesome. Um, is there a specific Doctrine Quality song where you guys think I totally resonate with this one? I um, mean, it does depend. Like, I mean, sometimes there are songs that I kind of not forget about, but maybe I forgot like what it meant to me at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we pick it up. Like some of the songs that we played to tonight for or today for it since was songs that we haven't played in six, seven, eight, ten years, and and I kind of forgotten like how it made me feel and, and what I felt writing the lyrics for it. So it, it's cool to kind of get that brought back to you, you know? Um, but overall, I mean, of course, like the, the songs that we play the most, they, they have a different kind of meaning. You know, when you wrote them, it was, it was a matter of like, oh, this fits into an album, this fits into the whole, you know, aspect of it. Whereas now it's just like that song that we always play live. Um, so it, it changes a lot, like, and, and some of the songs I love to play live and you go like, oh, this feels great and we have a lot of fun and everybody plays amazingly well and I, I love that and I think, uh, yes, yeah, so some of the songs that we picked up in recent years, like Hours Past in Exile, for instance, like this, something that I really love, like, it's like, it's cool to kind of bring some, some old stuff back to, to kind of like, this, this, this meant something at the time and it means something now. Trip down memory lane. Yes. Yeah, I mean, not only that. I mean, I, I think like, and also we can kind of elevate it to a to a point where we, when we play it now, like with you, Kim, and with Christian and Yua, like it sounds better than we ever played it back in the day. So that that really helps for me as well, and that makes me and for kid, then I have to fucking live it too. Well, but it, that that makes it uh, really interesting. What about you? Michael's lyrics are always very uh, emotions at stake. Like the, this guy means he means something. I don't really know what it is, 
so it's kind of abstract so I can make uh, I can apply it to whatever I feel in my interpretation so I, I really like it it's like for example the, these those songs from uh, uh, damaged on like our best next sound like I don't really know exactly what it means but I can you know I can can make up my own kind of interpretation and I really like that you hide behind the words but then of course like someone can apply that to yeah, yeah. well I mean <laughs> you, you can you can call it hiding but for me it's more like keeping it um, for me it's like keeping it vague but at the same time really it really feels meaningful dark and broken was uh, for me you know, but I, I'm kind of what do you say Partial or uh, biased, but biased. That's <laughs> no, no. Biased because this was one of the one of the first songs that that I got into the like my idea that I got into the band. So it kind of, of course, it means a lot that to me. Cool, and because first of all, the last time we were kind of like, okay, now we need to integrate. Like Johan was writing, and, and we had a lot of songs that we were always in hybrid. So now, how did we integrate like someone new? You know, coming from different, even though you know. You want to know our stuff, of course, and we've been playing together a lot. But then, like now, it's time to kind of write together. So, so that was a learning period for for us. How to communicate our music, as the same way as you know, for you to kind of understand us. And now we kind of communicate yeah. the way that we write. You know, it, yeah, it's a it's a different thing because yeah, we were 14, but we started a band, and we just sat around and go like be like this, yeah, <laughs> and that, that was kind of that was it, and then. That became a lot of riffs. Yeah, and, and, and of riffs. The vocabulary of <laughs> communicating music yeah. became our own. And then for 20 years that was the same, or 25 years, and that was the same. And then it's like now we have to open it up to new musicians and stuff. And then that, that that's been fascinating and, and, and a great like kind of learning experience as well. Like trying to kind of how do we communicate? Like how do how this should feel or how we should do this? You know, and because um, I, it, that was new. Right? And I, I think a lot of great ideas came from that as well, like trying to figure out how to do this in yeah. Yeah, Having a common feeling about it and to understanding yeah. where everyone is. Why did you quit guitar? <laughs> I was horrible and I didn't put any effort to it. Um, me and Niklas, when we started the band, uh, we decided that okay, let's if we play guitar first, to be you know, we can get a drummer and, uh, and a singer and a bass player. But if play. you play on skate dance, you can't be that horrible because it's not easy stuff. It's not easy. And yeah, yeah, and we didn't have Pro Tools back then, so yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> exactly. You have to deliver the goods. Yeah. But yeah, but it, but it was rough, and I, I didn't really like it. I, I you know, me and Niklas wrote all the lyrics, and I wrote. All of the kind of the vocal parts and stuff like that, or most of it. So it's like this is what I want to do, and I was like, okay, play guitar. Oh. And I really <laughs> fucked up. Nick is so much better than I, and, and I was like, I didn't feel comfortable. So I was always singing whenever Anders wasn't there in, this, in the rehearsal room, and kind of like this is to be way more comfortable. So, so I was really relieved, you know, uh, after the. Don't have uh, to play guitar anymore. It's feeling so really, good. <laughs> Like, so after the recording of, of uh, Skydance there, but we felt like okay, and 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 us and Anders with the end of the time, like you know, he was like, okay, we are moving in different directions. So it was like, oh, okay, let, let's part ways. And so I was like, and I asked the other guys, how do you feel about me singing and, and not playing guitar? It's like, oh, then we need to get another guitar player. It's like, yeah, we we'll probably figure that out, and then we did. And so I was very happy about that. What tip would you have gotten to Mikael? Tip. To keep to keep improving to play guitar. <laughs> to play guitar. I'm not going back to playing guitar. <laughs> There's a mood. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, practice is probably a good because I don't. But in general, if for students, it's like try to you know emulate or listen and try to play what you what you really like. Like, like try to play along with records and 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 try to play every day. Just like. Like uh, like the more often you play, the better. Like, and uh, but if you know if Michael doesn't want to play, I can't. No, give I do really don't. Give any yeah. tips, you know. You can only lead lead the, the you can only you can only lead the horse to the water. You can make it drink. So, so yeah. if you don't feel it, don't do it. Yeah. Sum it up like this. All about feeling. Passion, passion and discipline. Thriving no, but, no, but discipline. I mean, it sounds like you know, it's, no, it's I'm, I'm really serious. It's, it's, 
I, I feel Good. like it's just passion to be just the best version of yourself you yes. can be. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if you don't yeah. want that, then yeah. it's okay. Yeah, yeah cool. absolutely. So thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> and we are really looking forward to your new record. Yeah. We, we, it's happening. It's coming. It's coming. So let's celebrate. Bye, awesome. everyone. Hi everyone, let me know in the comments below how you enjoyed my new video I did in cooperation with Wacken. So at this point, thank you so much to Sabrina and to Vincent for helping out here to make this real. It really, really meant a lot to me since Dark Tranquility is my most favorite band ever. Thank you to Mikael and to Yuan for letting me disturb your <laughs> well-deserved rest after the concert. It really, really meant a lot to me. And thank you so much to the amazing support on Patreon. You guys are the best team ever. If you want, you can check out my other videos here or click subscribe, hit the bell and select all if you want to get notified about all my future videos. Stay tuned and rock on.